Hey everybody, welcome to The Recoup. I'm Cooper Daniels and I'm a guy that knows a little about a lot. And today I am here with Brian Hertz. He is the co-creator of Filmio. Filmio is a platform aiming to decentralize, democratize how films and TV are funded, right? Is that an accurate assessment? That sounds good. And I know we'll go into more detail on that to, to flesh that out a little bit. Yeah, I think so. So Brian, thanks for joining. Uh, how are you doing? How's it going? Doing great. Uh, exciting yeah. times. We've got a lot going on and, uh, you know, every minute of the day is packed, uh, but we're having fun and, and doing some really cool things. Sweet, man. So let's just uh, let's just start from the beginning. I noticed that you've been building Filmio for a while. I, I mean, 2016, I think is what it said. So um, I would imagine that your solution has evolved over the years. Now you've landed on um, using black uh, blockchain technology. Yeah. And there's a DAO structure, which we'll definitely dive into later. But maybe you can um, break down the origins of Filmio, um, how it's evolved, and what's the problem you're trying to solve. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's definitely been an evolutionary process. <clears throat> um, back in the early days, I'd say, you know, 2016 timeframe, we were a group of uh, five guys, you know, sitting around sipping scotch, trying to figure out how to make lives better for creators, you know? Yeah. Um, some of the team are creators themselves. Uh, some of us are technologists and, uh, you know, I've done some, some projects in the past where I've helped to, um, you know, reinvent the way processes work for different industries and things like that. So my friends have kind of looked at me as the guy who might be able to help solve this big pervasive problem of, you know, Hollywood being controlled by, uh, the elite few, whether they're individuals or, or the big studios and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and, you know, by and large, uh, when we uh, put pencil to paper, you know, really back of the napkin kind of stuff in the early days, we started thinking about a way to build a platform that would really bring fans in and make fans and creators first, you know, remove that barrier, kind of disintermediate the middleman um, mm -hmm. and not in a way that was, you know, trying to kill off any of the big Hollywood studios or anything like that. It was always about creating a fairer environment. Yeah. Um, and the, the real idea was to bring fans and creators together and give them a direct relationship. <clears throat> and it was always about building a community, helping a creator build a community around their project that they really want to build. Right. Um, and that's the thing that we found was that, uh, you know, creators in the traditional sort of filmmaking ecosystem, um, creators really have this tumultuous environment to navigate, right? Uh, where, you know, they're beholden to the studios, to film funds. Um, a lot of times they're not well known. They don't have a huge audience. Um, right. They might not have any hits behind them that they uh, have created and uh, they have a really tough time. So they have a, a, a disadvantage when they're going in to negotiate, to try to get funding, um, to try to get distribution. Yeah, I mean, uh, and I'm so sure that... that Go ahead. Yeah. Well, no. So that was really the, the problem we were trying to solve. And in the early days, um, to your point, it did not involve blockchain. Mm -hmm. um, blockchain was very early at that point. And uh, it wasn't until shortly after we had an opportunity to really look at blockchain and, and bring it in. And I can tell you more about that, but uh, I didn't want to interrupt yeah. your, your question. Well, no, I was just going to add to what you were saying. Uh, you know, I've been in this industry too. And um, if there's any industry with a large amount of gatekeepers, <laughs> yeah. I mean, the film industry is rife, you know, ripe with <clears throat> gatekeepers, middlemen, people that you have to get past to get to the guy. There's always a guy before the guy and they're all, you know, there's a lot of uh, self-importance and um, abuse of power in that industry, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's all about access, you know, and mm -hmm. most people don't have access <clears throat> and even the people who do. I mean, we find even like A-list actors, uh, people that are trying to produce their own film have the same issue, right? So yeah. it's, a, it's a closed system currently. Yeah. And uh, we can see by all the challenges that exist today in Hollywood um, that there are really centralized authorities and powers that are controlling everything. Um, mm -hmm. And that's where the blockchain part came in. Right. So, so let's talk about it. Was, it. Yeah, it was very, very synergistic as we started... 
um, exploring personally with blockchain technology. And I've been involved in blockchain since you know 2016, even a little bit before playing around with different uh, technologies and investing in the space and things of that nature. And um, really it was our CMO, Don, who, as we were uh, working through a pitch deck one day, he says, you know, the problem we're solving really is centralized power. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember the kind of epiphany at that point. It was like, the, what better technology to combat a centralized power problem than blockchain? Right. Mm -hmm. The entire thesis of blockchain is really decentralization. So um, we started exploring ways that we could employ uh, blockchain uh, distributed ledger into the platform. And it really took a foothold and, and became the primary focus of the underpinnings of the technology. Right. So where did you um, what how were you going to solve this before? Was it just going to be sort of a Web2 platform that allowed creators and then potentially fans to vote and stuff like that? Was that the idea? And then you realized that there was more you can do and there was technology at your you know fingertips? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we had this kind of hybrid. It was like a fan owned studio concept where mm -hmm. um, the company would you know raise capital. Uh, it would involve fans. Fans would be able to collaborate directly with creators and the company would actually invest and co-produce or executive produce films. We'd make investments into films. And we actually did that uh, in a number of films, uh, including one called 52577, uh, mm -hmm. which is a beautiful coming of age story. It's a Star Wars related film um, oh, cool. created by a guy named Pat Johnson, who actually is uh, involved with uh, Filmio and Ingredient X um, nice. and another one called Crypto uh, starring Kurt Russell. Oh, cool. So, so the idea was uh, pretty similar, but it was a Web2 platform. And so what we were building was really a way just to uh, bring these two parties together and also to help uh, raise capital and find distribution for them. But it was, yeah. again, a very centralized concept. And the problem that we would have going forward with that concept is uh, any company, any entity that becomes powerful enough um, is, you know, has to withstand temptation of corruption, right? Mm -hmm. And not saying that any of us would ever succumb to that, but the company won't always be in <laughs> our control, right? It wouldn't always be potentially controlled by us. And uh, we wanted to do something for the world and for creators and for the filmmaking entertainment ecosystem as a whole mm -hmm. that is incorruptible, you know, right. something that could actually withstand the test of time and any pressures put upon it um, and creating something that's truly decentralized was really the only way we could think of to actually accomplish that goal that would allow it to withstand the test of time and actually be um, a for the people by the people sort of endeavor. So the idea, and maybe we should dive in here um, on Filmio a little bit further. So the idea is, is that there's a company behind the creation of Filmio called Ingredient X, which you're um, also a co-founder of, correct? And, yeah. um, and so I'm, I imagine there's a, I mean, I do, I don't just imagine I, I looked into it, so I know, but <laughs> <laughs> there's a DAO structure. And so the idea is, is you guys get this started and then over time, you're going to be handing over control of Filmio to the DAO. Right. That, yeah. So, right? so we, we all work for a company uh, called Ingredient X, right? Mm -hmm. Our, our team, our development team. Mm -hmm. And, um, <clears throat> We've actually created, you know, a number of different technologies that uh, we think are very helpful in helping to democratize the film industry and helping creators. Mm -hmm. um, and the Filmio platform itself actually became, uh, you know, the manifestation of all of this work, right? Um, in order to actually properly decentralize it, adding blockchain technology wasn't really enough. Mm -hmm. um, we had to work with a group that uh, actually underneath a foundation an ownerless nonprofit foundation really took ownership of the Filmio technology and platform. Um, and that foundation is really uh, the board of that foundation kind of calls the shots in terms of, you know, what happens with that platform and all of the governance of the platform and the ecosystem currently. Um, so we're really developers who contributed this technology to this ownerless foundation. And within this foundation structure, you have Filmio, and at a slightly later date, we added the concept of the DAO. 
Mm -hmm. um, the idea there was that while having a foundation is a tried and true method of um, really perfecting a vision, um, you know, a charitable vision, something that can, you know, have social impact on the world. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also in a way still centralized in that you don't really have the ability to involve the public at large, the creators, the fans, the industry, um, there, there isn't a, an easy mechanism to allow that sort of influence and control. Right. And so adding the DAO was really about um, creating a, an ability to hand off power, which, you know, again, is, is following a very streamlined, very focused, chartered mission of helping to liberate and advance the creative and, and filmmaking uh, industries. But that would allow us to hand that over to, you know, fans, creators, and actually, we're uh, working on a solution that will involve even the established, um, you know, Hollywood and other filmmaking professionals, the actors, directors, uh, producers, the studios, um, mm -hmm. letting everyone get involved because it's not that we want to disclude anyone. We actually want to include everyone. Mm -hmm. um, so the DAO gives us the framework to be able to do that. Uh, okay. And we built our own tools to actually allow that to, uh, to, to take place, to onboard all of these different types of users um, who can not only help to govern which films are created and greenlit through the ecosystem, but we will be, uh, the foundation, I should say, will be increasingly handing governance decisions off to the DAO as well. Cool. So, I mean, we're going to, I want to dive into how it actually works, but so it sounds like um, Ingredient X is building this, it's the development team, it's going to continue to develop it, but the decision making is going to be handed over to the DAO and um, Ingredient X, is it, um, are you guys also, because you, you had mentioned that you had um, in the past made some movies, uh, Crypto with Kurt Russell. That's, I've seen that, I think. That's out, yeah, right? We're, we're executive yeah. producers of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, cool. and yeah, that's been out for a few years. Yeah. Uh, and, and really, the I think the one that we're the proudest of at this date is 52577. It was actually uh, sold to Showtime and it's, uh, it's available on Showtime and other platforms right now. It's a beautiful movie. Yeah, so you guys, um, you guys make movies as well. Obviously, I mean, I mean, it makes sense that you would be interested in making movies as you're building Filmio. Yeah, and if if you think about it, um, it, it was actually only recently that we really sort of deciphered all of this ourselves because you get busy working and you know you kind of uh, lose track of time and you know we've been so uh, busy working on the solution uh, that we've 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 kind of redefined recently really you know, what it is that Ingredient X does aside right. from helping to support the technology platform of Filmio. Because mm -hmm. uh, we're really, in, at this stage, we're really contractors, you know. Um, right. we, we do support that platform. But, you know, the original vision of this group was, you know, how do we help the industry and also help ourselves? Because we have aspirations to, you know, produce more films, to create more technology. And so Ingredient X is really a studio that mm -hmm. creates original content um, invests in original content that we uh, that we like. And, and one of the things that we'll be doing more going forward is because we obviously really believe in the algorithm behind Filmio as a mm -hmm. whole, uh, we'll be taking guidance from the Filmio platform and pr projects that have a higher Go score, we, along with many other studios across the world, will have that intelligence of the platform to be able to de-risk our investment decisions. And so yeah. we'll be deploying capital, you know, based on that and based on, you know, other factors as well. Uh, but we really want to make movies and, you know, we want to uh, enjoy the, um, you know, liberation of this industry uh, for the betterment of, you know, our decisions and our ability to participate as well as everyone else's across the industry. Okay, so let's break down some of this stuff like GoScore and how the platform actually works. And before I do that, though, just because you've touched on it a little bit and, they, and my mind keeps on going to it, you know, obviously, um, blockchain, crypto has a reputation. There's a reputation. If I bring it up to anybody in this city that isn't connected to it, it's like, what do you think crypto or blockchain is and mm -hmm. like money laundering scams and uh, right. criminals, right? And so, <laughs> and so obviously... Uh, being in the film industry there, um, I would imagine that some of that sentiment exists there. Um, are, are you, and then there's obviously you have to be, you're in, I know you're in Southern California, so you have to be very mindful of regulators. There's a very um, aggressive regulation, or I, I should say not a regulation, uh, regulators right now. Yeah. 
So um, what, how are you sensing in the industry? Is there pushback because you guys are a blockchain uh, company as well? Or, or is it actually bringing some excitement, both, you know? I would say it's a little bit of both. I mean, these days there's less pushback. I would say, you know, if you think about this back in 2017, when you yeah. had all these ICOs and things like that launching, um, you know, you had, there was a lot of skepticism. And, and every time something happens in the blockchain industry, you know, we had FTX collapse and we had yeah. Terra Luna, you know, we had all these different you know, incidents in blockchain. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that the, the less involved, less knowledgeable people in blockchain um, are, you know, more timid and more scared as a result of that. Um, and then, you know, you end up with these cycles and the next uh, bull cycle, you'll have a lot of people who, you know, rejoin the fray and get re-excited. Yeah. The way that we really look at this is <clears throat> if you think about Bitcoin, um, I think that, you know, if you look at the early days of Bitcoin, Silk Road, like you said, all this money laundering, you know, drug smuggling and things like that. <clears throat> those were the stories that people heard about and, and what they associated with Bitcoin. Um, today, I think we can see that Bitcoin has democratized money, at least to some extent. Right. Mm -hmm. You have most of the presidential candidates that are behind it. Um, you have most of the institutional investors and banks that are getting involved, all of the ETFs for Bitcoin that are, you know, in process, the battles mm -hmm. with the SEC and things of that nature. And so I think it's pretty safe to say that Bitcoin is here to stay. Um, yeah. It may go through some additional turmoil and, you know, the roller coaster will be exciting to kind of watch and play out. We think what we're doing with Filmio and our involvement with Filmio um, is akin to what Bitcoin has done for money, right? Mm -hmm. We are democratizing the film industry like Bitcoin democratized money. And, yeah. uh, you know, that's a, a really exciting uh, thing to be working on. It keeps us motivated and pumped every day. And, you know, there are always naysayers. <clears throat> I would say that uh, our conversation these days with people who um, are doubtful about what we're doing are a lot easier to explain. They're a lot smoother. And when you can show people the platform Nobody can deny when they get inside of Filmio and the people that have early access um, and people that we share it with, when you see the hundred plus movies in there, you know, when you see the outcomes, when you see money flowing to great creators that need it, you see the comments from the fans and you see the creators interacting directly, you can really see the manifestation of this thing happening. And there isn't anyone in the middle of it pulling the strings on it. It is all running autonomously on blockchain. So... Uh, the conversation today, thankfully, is much easier than some, you know, very memorable conversations we had in the past that was like, what are you guys doing and how is this going to work? And, you know, is this is this real? You know? Yeah, for sure. And I, I imagine it gets easier when you're able to say things like, well, Starbucks and, you know, you can, you can point at a lot of different institutions, you know, BlackRock. You can say you can name some of the biggest names um, in money yeah. and in, in retail and they're incorporating NFTs and they're doing different things now. So it is much more mainstream. For sure. Yeah, man. Um, okay, so let's dive into how the platform works. So this is so we're, I'm a I'm a creator. I'm looking um, I'm looking to get my film. I have an independent film that I've been trying to make. I can't get anybody to throw any money at it. I love my film. I've got I've got a script. I've got a deck. I've got um, maybe a, a couple of things shot just so people can see it. Um, you know what what can I do and how does the platform work? Yeah. It's a great question. And let me give you just kind of the log line, you know. <clears throat> um, Filmio is a decentralized filmmaking ecosystem where we help mm -hmm. creators build a community around their film projects, film mm -hmm. or TV, and maybe in the future other types of projects. Uh, we help them build a community and then we help them to get funding and distribution, right? Okay. Um, so they don't have to go knocking on any doors. You know, they don't have to go on a road show and get beat up by you know, big studios and things of that nature. The studios can still participate, but now it's yeah. going to be after there's a community who have said, hey, this is a good idea. I like this creator. I like this project. So they have a little bit more sort of social proof that somebody really cares about this project. Right. And if you're a creator, um, it's pretty easy. I mean, you right now, uh, I believe the projects will be submitted and they'll kind of go into a queue. Um, mm -hmm. It's early access. Um, this right. will change very soon over the next, you know, six weeks, probably. Uh, will be in an open beta. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, but a creator can submit a project and it gets reviewed initially to make sure that it uh, adheres to the DAO's constitution, which eff effectively just prevents pornography, hate speech, you know, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, a project will be publishable by the creator once they meet a set of criteria. So they have to have a minimum set of uh, assets actually published. <clears throat> I believe right now it's a log line, a movie poster, um, maybe a description. It keeps kind of changing uh, as mm -hmm. we evolve. Mm -hmm. But uh, as soon as that's uh, available, they can actually publish the project. And they can also they can invite their friends, uh, their fans, if they've got fans on social media. Um, right now, it's fairly limited. We give each creator 100. Um, mm -hmm. That's just because of the early access state that we're in. When it opens, the lid will blow off of this thing. And, uh, you know, the creators that have 100 or 1,000, 10,000, even a million plus fans on social media, they'll be able to invite them. And as the social graph within Filmio grows, um, fans are invited to actually participate by communicating directly with the creators uh, and, and to review and rate the projects that they care about. Um, and there's the tokenization piece of this, the fan token um, is another whole kind of story and part of um, how this platform actually helps to move uh, good projects through the ecosystem and help them gain a community, help them gain access to funding and distribution. Um, and just very briefly how that works is every fan who signs up for Filmio gets some fan tokens. Mm -hmm. um, when you own fan tokens, you are a member of the Filmio DAO. We don't charge you to become a member of the Filmio DAO. Um, we want the broadest cross section of human beings across the world from every you know, facet of, of the planet to be involved in uh, this democratic process of helping filmmakers. Mm -hmm. And so when you sign up, you get some fan tokens and every project that's submitted and we'll get a little technical here. Um, I know your audience is pretty savvy in terms of blockchain, uh, yeah. but every project that is submitted uh, is submitted as a DAO proposal. And this is all happening in the background. We don't create a technical barrier so people don't need to have uh, a blockchain you know, know-how or knowledge in order to do this. But in the background, every project is a DAO proposal. Mm -hmm. And when fans are invited to review and rate and view the content. Maybe it's a you know teaser reel or a lookbook or something that the creator has submitted about their project. If they like the project, they can stake their fan tokens to that project. And they can actually earn rewards that we call fan governance rewards. They're additional fan tokens that can increase their ability to be effective uh, as a DAO member within the community. Mm -hmm. Those fan token stakes, along with a bunch of other metrics, are part of what drive the score, the algorithmic scoring system for each project that we call the Go score. Right. And the Go score actually uh, goes up and down based on a bunch of different factors, including how many staked tokens, how many unique stakers, reviews, ratings, some other on-chain and off-chain data. Mm -hmm. And the Go score at any given time is a representation of what the algorithm feels is the quality of that project within Filmio. And so as a, another participant, whether you're a fan or an investor, a studio or what have you, um, looking at that Go score can be an indicator of the success uh, fingerprint of that project. And if you're an investor, can actually help to de-risk uh, the investment or the acquisition of that project. Yeah, I, it sounds like this Go score is integral to what you what you're doing because obviously with a token, something like fan token will end up. Um, you guys are building on uh, Polygon, right? Yeah, it's a yeah. Um, ERC twenty token, so it's built yeah. on Ethereum effectively, but we're deployed yeah. on Polygon for various reasons. Yeah, and then um, well, we can dive into that too, but let's let's yeah. actually I'm, this Go score is interesting. So um, the Go score is uh i mean okay that's what that was my point my point is is that with, when it's an erc20 it's going to end up in d5 people can accumulate it and right. so i would imagine you need to be careful not to just let people manipulate this by just hoarding a bunch of these tokens and then staking and then then your platform isn't as useful as um as you intended 
because you have one person staking a ton to his buddy's thing or whatever right. it is. And so um, you've had hmm. to incorporate a lot of this other stuff and all this other data that you're um, um, accruing things yeah. like that you, I'm, you may call reputation, right? So um, how, how maybe go into a little bit more detail on how you guys are outside of the token stake um, determining that and then how you are maintaining the utility of the token still while you incorporate these other aspects. Yeah, it's a good question. And, uh, you know, I'll preface the answer by saying that it, it's just, this is an evolutionary process, right? Right. Um, so, you know, every day, I mean, we're seeing advancements in this thing. And, you know, on a regular basis, there are deployments happening that, um, you know, are improving the process and the algorithm, and it'll continue to do that probably infinitely, you know, right. The, the, the goal of the algorithm is to be as accurate as it possibly can be. Right. Um, and we're actually integrating some AI and things like that, that have the ability to um, incorporate some, you know, off chain data. Uh, mm -hmm. That's pretty interesting. Um, for the most part right now, what the algorithm looks at is on chain data. There is some off chain, <clears throat> but uh, it looks at stakes, um, unique stakers, um, and there's a quadratic sort of voting algorithm in there that prevents that whale effect that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, there are a couple of things that actually prevent that. One is you have to be at one of the increased DAO tiers uh, in order to actually be able to stake the maximum number of tokens. And there is a limit on the number of tokens you can stake anyway. Um, but we don't just look at the number of tokens. We also look at the number of unique stakers. So right. the algorithm kind of adjusts in that way as well. Mm -hmm. um, we look at the fan sentiment, right? We look at uh, the, the ratings and reviews. Um, we look at the different uh, activity within the platform itself, within that project. Um, and there are things happening that um, at various levels, which will be more impactful going forward, that are looking at things like film comps and things like that. So script mm -hmm. analysis, um, the ability to actually look at, you know, comps in the market, um, you know, box office and streaming revenue, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. So as it evolves, it'll add more and more of those types of things. Um, and uh, we actually are working on ways of providing uh, some of that data as feedback to the creators as well. So they can use all of this in a way that actually allows them to evolve. Um, one of the things that's important for a creator is to know, you know, maybe my project isn't hitting on every, you know, every aspect right now, you know, maybe mm -hmm. there's room for improvement. And so we want to be able to expose those areas to the creator um, along with the fans feedback so that mm -hmm. they can actually adjust in real time, uh, maybe rewrite a scene or, you know, change a character or something like that. So, all of this works in uh, harmony in order to help the creator ultimately elevate the Go score. Uh, and that Go score itself is uh, an evolving algorithm. There seems to be a real benefit here, especially if your algorithm is really kind of uh, measuring these things in an excellent way, that people that are looking to deploy money into new projects that want to find um, something like a story that resonates with an audience, they're getting all of this data and they're getting all right. of this um, information about these. You get to a sneak peek, you get a marketplace almost to kind of look through. You're seeing where fans are excited. You're seeing where people on this platform that are savvy, obviously you're going to, especially in the beginning, you're going to be, um, you're going to be attracting savvy people that love movies that have opinions about it, that, that, for somebody that's looking to deploy money, I think that that would be an invaluable resource. And um, and it's obviously a resource for the creators that get lost in the mix, like we were talking about earlier on in the show. So um, I guess I, I, I guess I just wanted to say that. <laughs> but what is your... Well, a lot, um, to your point, yeah. a lot can yeah. be gleaned from the audience, you know, the yeah. interactions, right? And this is normally a black box, right? Like if you are a creator and you go to Netflix with your mm -hmm. script... And they kind of look at you from their big, tall desk, you know, they look down and they go like, so, you know, yeah. we don't know, you know, like we don't know you and the script seems pretty good and they don't know how to really treat that, you know, yeah. and this could be a brilliant creator and it could be a, a, an amazing script. And 
for those, you know, investors or, you know, licensors of, you know, content, whatever, um, even just to read through uh, the, the dialogue between the creator and the fans, there's a lot you can learn from that, that engagement, you know, yeah. I mean, we have people posting interesting, you know, content about things that happen on the set, you know, and backstories about things and the reactions and, you know, the creator's ability to curate an audience um, in the early days, I think can be a real indicator of how they, how that will translate through in how their script captivates people, you know? Yeah. And so there's just a lot there and, and it's not something that's really been uh, pulled together in one place in the past. So this is a really interesting sort of playground for all of that activity to occur and those insights to be gleaned uh, depending on, you know, what perspective you're coming at this from investor, you know, what have you. Yeah. And it, it sort of, it, it kind of harkens back to, you know, nowadays, if you're an actor or even trying to get a movie, people are going to go look at your social media. They're going to see what kind of reach you have. But a lot of times it that reach isn't because of some particular talent or the art that you, I mean, you have a talent for that if you've created a large following, but that doesn't indicate a good movie or a good actor necessarily. Right. But on a platform like this, with a lot of fans and staked and you see an active chat, you get to see an artist connecting with an audience and about a certain project. It's very, it's much more specific and uh, probably more fine tuned for somebody that is observing with a keen eye looking for a result out of it, you know? hundred percent. Yeah. This yeah. kind of, you could think of it almost like a big data play. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of, there's going to be a lot of data. It's the conversations you can get involved and kind of see how the creator reacts to things. But also, there's a dashboard. It's not in there right now, but there's a mm -hmm. dashboard uh, that we have that is specifically for investors and can give them, you know, metrics that they will need in order to be able to make decisions uh, mm -hmm. and ways to search for projects that hit their investment criteria as well. Uh, so, who are these? Inv uh, who are these investors? Like, or yeah, who do I you mean, imagine them as? What we we think of like the the bucket of the non fans and non. Uh, creators as investors, you know, that it could be a studio production company, uh, film funds could be high net worth individuals, family offices, the ability for people to invest in these projects um, is not tied to the earlier part of what I described with a fan token per mm -hmm. se. Um, we wanted to give everyone the ability to participate in the projects that they want to gain access to. And mm -hmm. so if you are, uh, a fan that is, you know, the number one staker in, uh, let's say, Chicken Ship, right? The one mm -hmm. that, we, that we talked about earlier. Um, mm -hmm. This is a, a great uh, project from Craig Shoemaker that uh, he actually just won the first contest that we ran on the platform. He won $10,000. Um, and if you're the first staker to that, we're actually keeping track of your order in line. And if Craig decides, I have no idea what he plans to do, but if he decides that he's going to open up a funding campaign for that movie, um, he could open up a Reg CF offering, right? Which is a regulated crowdfunding offering uh, mm -hmm. that allows, you know, non-accredited investors to participate. And we're actually partnering with broker dealers that enable this. We're oh, not cool. a broker dealer. Filmio won't be a broker dealer, but we're partnering with broker dealers that enable that to happen. Mm -hmm. If he decided to launch that, that first staker will be invited in, in order, they will have priority access to participate in an equity offering within that for, for that actual film. And so if he wants to raise $5 million and he has 50,000 fans in there, it doesn't take a whole lot of fans at $500 or $1,000 or $200 in order to fund a $5 million campaign. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're enabling those types of tools, um, other, you know, sort of decentralized tools as well. Um, there's a DeFi uh, component to this that's in the works as well. Mm -hmm. um, there's an NFT studio that'll be announced at a, at a later time that actually mm -hmm. will allow people to, you know, sell NFTs as a product for like non-dilutive capital. Um, if their project app actually is, um, you know, conducive to that concept, like they've got characters that would potentially become uh, the art behind, you know, an NFT collection and things like that. So there are lots of funding opportunities and, the way fans participate, just to recap that, is that if you're an early staker, 
you basically gain early access with the ability to participate in one of those types of campaigns, be it a Reg CF offering or an NFT mm. campaign, so mm -hmm. that you can actually continue down this journey with that creator over the course of time. And now that you know that they're becoming more and more successful, which is like the ideal time to launch a campaign like this, um, you're right there alongside them, able to continue supporting them and able to continue participating with them. Uh, so we think that that's a, a really powerful way of, you know, moving funding through the ecosystem, helping to enable projects. And of course, along the way, you know, if a studio looked at this or a, a streamer through their interface came across this project and went, hey, you know, we need to talk to Craig or we need to talk to another one of the creators. Um, they most certainly can do that. And maybe they strike a distribution deal right there. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, because you, you see that type of um, thing with like music royalties or, um, you know, more obvious things like real estate. Um, I, there's a, a project called Lofty that it tokenizes an Airbnb. So you get a bit of the, you know, residuals for, uh, for you know, what, you know how that goes. You, you get yeah. a part of that, how all of that goes. And it always kind of was interesting to me that there was no, or I, that I'm aware of, and maybe you're probably more aware of it. Maybe it does exist, but this idea of crowdfunding sort of, but actually giving um, ownership to fans or um, lower level um, investors, like right. you said, $500 does add up. If there's a bunch of fans for a project, you know, because some of these guys that are going to come onto your platform aren't going to just be people that don't have fans. They might have had a movie before that people love. And so that there's something exciting that they actually bring in a ton of people. $500 totally. adds up, adds up. So that I'm sure it's a regulatory nightmare for you guys. But at the same time, like it sounds like you also were doing all the right things and you're not the broker dealer. You're talking to the lawyers. I'm sure you have a law team. So you're making it, you know, you're taking the journey in the right way. But um, I mean, that as just one aspect. And then also you don't have to go that way. Like you're saying, you can you can do an NFT type of thing that helps like have people connect to it and everything. So that sounds like really exciting. Yeah, it's, it's like a yeah. choose your own, you choose your own adventure novel for the creator, right? I mean, they're, they're yeah. in there. You know, when you have an audience, when you have this community, you just have power, you know, yeah. and that's really the premise. The initial premise behind this is, um, you know, we have built a technology, an ecosystem that can replicate these kind of one off things where, you know, you've seen on Twitter or whatever, you know, communities evolve around a concept. Um, we've created the infrastructure and the systems to allow that to happen at scale repeatedly, mm -hmm. you know, and that is a game changer for creators. It's just something that, uh, you know, we, we don't know how many will, you know, immediately try to go and, and work with Netflix, you know, but we know that with a community, um, Netflix will look at that project entirely differently than without one. Um, yeah. So, you know, it's every creator has their own kind of aspirations. Not everyone wants to, you know, completely self-produce. Um, yeah. And, uh, but we want to give, people the ability to navigate this on their own terms. Yeah. Cool. So let's uh, dive just a little bit more into the DAO and the token. So the token is used for staking on the platform. You're able to earn um, rewards from that staking. And then obviously, and then I imagine when the project uh, goes or um, th that you get those tokens back along with the rewards that you have earned, um, I imagine also that the fan token is used in the DAO for voting purposes. So how uh, how does the, how is the DAO structured, and how are people going to get their hands on this token? Yeah, it's a good question. So um, the DAO is structured as a, a multi-tiered DAO, right? Mm -hmm. So when you join, you're basically unranked. Um, there are a couple things you have to do to prove that you're human. Uh, mm -hmm. to prove that you uh, have interest in this and you're not just there to get the tokens and, and run. Mm -hmm. um, and right now the tokens are really exclusively available by signing up. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we have some, you know, early participants that were able to get tokens as kind of a bonus, mm -hmm. um, but they will eventually be on exchanges um, mm -hmm. so that you can actually buy them. And the purpose behind that is to allow as many people across the world to be able to gain access to these to be able to participate in the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but right now, uh, when you sign up, you receive, you know, a hundred fan tokens. Mm-hmm. Um, you can participate in an airdrop. We did one airdrop uh, a number of months ago. Uh, we will be doing more. Part of the tokenomics call for um, airdrops to happen over the course of time in order to continue spreading these out uh, mm-hmm. globally. And uh, when you join the DAO, again, you start off unranked. And as you progress through, you get more and more sort of rights as a DAO member or uh, responsibilities, privileges, however you want to look at it. Mm-hmm. Um, when you get to, I believe it's the gold tier, um, you're asked to KYC. And that means that once you successfully pass KYC, um, now there's enough data kind of on file to know that, um, you know, you have the ability to participate in governance decisions. Um, so very similar to how some of the DEXs work and other, you know, decentralized ecosystems with DAOs. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, I think the main difference with ours is we really want as many participants as possible. Um, the thing that you get to do from the very beginning as a DAO member uh, without doing too much work is you're able to stake your tokens to a project. Mm-hmm. And that allows you to govern, you know, which projects actually can, can uh, succeed within the ecosystem. Um, beyond that, you know, the, the, the way the DAO works is <clears throat> if you received an airdrop or you receive tokens for signing up, you can claim a certain percentage of those immediately, but mm-hmm. they're gated behind your advancement in the DAO up to additional DAO tiers. So the first 25% you may be able to get very quickly. Uh, the second 25%, you have to complete more actions. Mm-hmm. By the way, those actions, every time you do something on the platform, whether it's rating a project, reviewing a project, um, you know, any of those actions, even referring your friends on social media to become uh, fans on Filmio, you're earning more fan tokens, right? Oh, cool. Yeah. And so this actually has created um, this sort of karma system within the DAO, uh, where you mentioned reputation earlier. And the mm-hmm. way that we look at reputation is reputation applies to individuals, and the go score applies to projects. Mm-hmm. So if you're a user of the platform, whether you're an investor, just a fan, you know, a creator, if you're a user of the platform, all of the actions you're taking um, and the tokens you're earning as a result of the actions you're taking, including your staking rewards, those are helping to increase your reputation. Mm-hmm. We're also tracking how right you are along the way. So if you're getting behind projects, and mm-hmm. you're picking winners, your reputation will actually increase within the platform as well. There are a bunch of things that affect the reputation. That's cool. Um, yeah. So that's, I don't know if that answered your complete question about the DAO, but. Yeah. So it sounds like anybody can sort of participate. You'll get this airdrop. If you um, accomplish a bunch of tasks, you'll earn some more. You can even, without KYC, you can stake and earn on the platform. But eventually, um, once you reach a certain level, which is maybe the second or third or the second to highest, yep. um, you will have to KYC. And you're saying that you have to KYC for uh, reasons that are typical you know, just so you can have fuller data. And I mean, so what are the exact reasons that you're feeling that you have people need to KYC in order to participate? Yeah. So, I mean, the reason that we didn't make that a requirement up front mm-hmm. is that, you know, not every user in the platform is going to be savvy, you know, enough to, uh, or have the desire to actually want to, you know, use the blockchain kind of features that we have. Um, right or participate in really more like corporate governance, you know, mm-hmm. and the, the, the typical fan that wants to get behind a project and participate in a project. Um, we don't think they need to KYC because it is a gate. It is, it is a barrier. When you mm-hmm. get to the point where you're going to be involved in corporate governance decisions, um, they might affect, you know, various things. There's their legalities there. Yeah. Then, we need to know to a higher degree that this is a legit person Uh, and also that we're not duplicating efforts because while we put protections in place that should help prevent people from getting duplicate accounts, you know, we want to really ensure at that level that we're um, that we know, you know, that people's decision-making authority is being exercised in a responsible way. Yeah. Cool. 
All right, man. Well, you mentioned it earlier, um, Polygon. We, you're, you're building on Polygon. It's an ERC twenty token. Uh, so, you know, what were your what were your what was your thinking deciding to uh, use um, Ethereum and Polygon? You know, in the early days, <clears throat> I'll share something with you. Most people don't know, uh, which mm -hmm. is that we actually started building on EOS. Okay. Um, and EOS was cool. You know, it was uh, some people still really like it. I mean, I, I don't want to mm -hmm. knock the project, but you know. This is a mass adoption sort of a play, you know, it's yeah. not a, you know, we, we've done a lot of work to build kind of web two user experience in, even though there's a lot of web three happening in the background. Mm -hmm. And that's because we think that this is going to be one of the real mass onboarding to blockchain sorts of uh, experiences in, in the mm -hmm. world, you know, because it touches so many people, like every human being pretty much is a fan, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, so EOS uh, didn't really have the adoption that we uh, were looking for. And, you know, uh, we thought that we better, you know, really start aiming more for mainstream. Mm -hmm. um, and we were, we've always been big fans of Ethereum, you know, as, yeah. as you know, investors and, uh, you know, just participants in different projects. Yeah. So it made sense when we were making some decisions on, you know, coming out of the kind of alpha phase and, more, you know, releasing this platform uh, to do something that was more mainstream. And Polygon was just a decision that made it easier for people to participate in terms of cost, um, yeah. speed, you know, you know, the congestion issues sometimes on Ethereum, which yeah. it, you know, looks like it's being solved, um, you know, with their own rollups and things like that. But yeah, uh, Polygon was sort of the leader in that in that layer two kind of realm. And uh, it made sense to deploy on Polygon and we'll probably deploy across, you know, various networks um, as we evolve, you know, just to, you know, broaden the ability for people to use it. Yeah. Um, Polygon has been great and uh, it's actually enabled us to turn on gasless transactions, which are really cool. Oh, cool. Uh, so, you know, if you get into the platform and, you know, you stake or whatever, uh, while all the blockchain mechanics are happening in the background you just kind of see the transaction happen um and you know that they're they're cheap enough for us right now uh for the project to be able to cover like subsidize uh the gas uh that's happening in the background because we're on polygon <clears throat> that's cool well yeah that's definitely because even sometimes with polygon you know there can be congestion in um you know some gas fees but uh it if if you guys are finding that you're able to do it, because you would think that that would be a barrier from people staking and all of that. If it's like if they're I mean, if it were on native Ethereum, that would be too expensive. It would be definitely be a roadblock for people to participate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah totally. But, like when the, these are, you know, free tokens, you know, people yeah. are staking them, they're voting <clears throat> um, not only a technological barrier, but yeah, then you're, you're really asking people to do a lot to pay, you know, three, four, five dollars to stake some tokens. Yeah. Um, because we want them to use the platform a lot, you know? Yeah. And, and, you know, we probably won't always subsidize all the transactions that are happening right now. We yeah. do, um, yeah. you know, we have the ability to basically, uh, determine, you know, which transactions are subsidized and which ones aren't, how much mm -hmm. of them we subsidize, you know, uh, yeah. and hopefully the costs won't always be as high, uh, mm -hmm. for transactions to take place. And, uh, you know, we'll kind of play with that as we go. But right now, the idea is we want adoption. You know, we yeah. want the, the world to participate and see what we've built and uh, to get involved. And, uh, you know, anything that slows that down, we try to figure out a way around. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. Um, if you're in the film industry, it's a splashy industry. You would probably want to go where uh, some of the money is and where the liquidity, we'll call it liquidity, and people, you know, there's lots of people over there on uh, Polygon, Polygon and Ethereum. Yeah. Um, all right, man. Well, so there you go. Like, uh, I feel like we did a pretty good job. So you mentioned it, and I think we may have talked about it before I press record, but you had a... Uh, you had a contest. You mentioned it. it's uh, Chicken Ship, and it's an animated. Uh, it's an animated project that just won um, your first really kind of. Um, I don't know. First, contest. Big, yeah. yeah, contest. Big example of how your platform is <laughs> going to work. So, uh, you, maybe you can talk about that a little bit if you want. If there's anything that you haven't said about it that you want to, and then where this is going from here. You're in beta. You said in six weeks you're going to be opening it up. So yeah. So what's the roadmap look like? 
Yeah. So we are uh, in this early access phase right now. It's really kind of a closed beta. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be in beta for a while just because it's an experimental technology. And as the foundation and the DAO kind of determine, you know, timelines and what to do with this, um, <clears throat> different features will be released. But they're the coming out of closed beta early access is planned for over the next six weeks, give mm -hmm. or take. Um, okay. Lots of work has gone in and there are lots of cool things being implemented right now that um, I think are going to be really exciting to, to release. Um, so in terms of, of chicken ship to kind of answer that first question in terms of the contest, mm -hmm. <clears throat> the, if you think about the platform as a whole, there's really this ongoing contest running all the time. Um, one of the things that we're going to be doing is the foundation has decided as part of its charter <clears throat> that it will be um, issuing grants in the form of these contests to various creators projects. Mm -hmm. And it's following the go score as the metric to actually use in order to issue those grants. So <clears throat> the way the contests work um, and they could be launched, you know, pretty much any time. Uh, and this particular one was launched, the one that you mentioned with Chicken Ship winning the $10,000 mm -hmm. was launched as an airdrop. Um, that one was launched and there's, there was a contest period within which all of the creators that participated who signed up, actually their mission in life during that period was to elevate their Go score. Mm -hmm. And one of the main ways to do that is to invite people to participate to communicate with those fans to get more stakes going on their project. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Craig actually won. This was just a few days ago that that took place. Um, and so he actually won the, the very first contest and grant that was issued uh, from the foundation, you know, from this project. And uh, we think that's really exciting. And I think, you know, there will likely be many, many more running even in parallel across the platform for different purposes. Mm -hmm. We can have contests for different genres. We can have them for different time periods. Um, so that's one of the things that the platform has been built to do. Cool. Um, and by the way, I mean, this is something that we also invite studios to participate in. Um, we've built a studio interface that actually allows studios to run their own contests, to actually mm -hmm. have their own slate within the project and to tap into the social graph of, uh, of the ecosystem. Um, so that's pretty exciting and something uh, we'll see a lot more of uh, down the road, um, you know, evolving as the as the platform, um, you know, grows and, and expands. Um, and then as far as other features go, kind of where is this all going? Mm -hmm. uh, I mentioned some of those things earlier. I mean, we do have, um, you know, funding features is one of the main categories that we're actually working on. Um, that'll be deployed pretty soon. Uh, mm -hmm. The NFT studio, because while the NFT market right now is uh, definitely bearish, mm -hmm. we think that the utility of NFTs to engage an audience is really powerful. Um, and, you know, films traditionally, as we all know, um, you know, they brand out as they become successful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Filmio is actually a home not only for like fledgling projects, but also fully produced films, even released yeah. films. You know, as it grows, um, it would be pretty awesome for even a, a, a major film uh, brand to publish their film on Filmio and mm -hmm. use it as the place to curate their audience and to launch an NFT campaign and maybe announce an upcoming film or a sequel. You know, yeah. so um, things like that, we're, we're adding those types of things. Um, so it's pretty exciting. And I mean, a lot of our focus over the coming months is going to be uh, you know, for Ingredient X as developers supporting things that are on the roadmap currently, uh, which are, again, the things I just mentioned, the funding NFT kinds of features. And there's actually a lot of AI being worked on and in integrated. Um, cool. So these are in a very sensitive time, obviously, to AI with the mm -hmm. industry being in turmoil and strikes. And one of the main subject matters of the strikes being, you know, the misuse of AI. Right. Um, we as a democratic ecosystem have to adhere to the constitution. And one of the things coming up is uh, basically a, um, uh, an amendment to the constitution that will involve some AI language and what can and can't be done 
within this ecosystem as it relates to AI. So that, that'll yeah. be pretty, pretty exciting. Um, but so far, the kinds of things that we're working on are tools for the creators themselves. Because again, this is a kind of indie platform at the moment, uh, focusing on allowing people to, um, you know, develop their projects. AI can be an incredible tool and a lot of creators don't really know how to leverage it. And there aren't a whole lot of tools that are available to creators that um, are specifically designed for this purpose. So we'll be pulling a lot of that stuff in and giving the creators the ability to um, leverage the power of AI to improve their projects along the right. way. Right, right. I know AI is definitely a game changer when it comes to a lot of those things. And that, and we didn't even talk about, I mean, the writer strike, which is now concluded, the actors are still, they're still working on it with the actors. And yeah, I mean, I, it, it occurred to me, I was like, wow, if I was more, uh, if I was better at AI, I mean, I, I could have a script in, um, in no time. So that, that is the problem, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's really, you know, I mean, the way, the way that I, I, this is just my personal position on this, but the way I look at AI is absolutely all, all rights should still follow the, the existing path, right? Like there's, there's no precedent for, or logic behind, in my opinion, um, a studio coming out and saying, we now own your likeness in AI. I mean, that's just, you know, yeah, that's crazy. That's yeah. just wrong. Right. And, yeah. and, but I, I, I think that the topic around AI is so polarized that some of the advantages of AI can't necessarily shine through right now, but I right. do believe that AI, instead of it becoming something that puts everyone out of business and takes over everyone's jobs, I think that we'll, we'll always know the projects that, have leveraged AI to a great extent. And I think yeah. that there'll be another sort of genre in a way, you know? Yeah. I mean, you'll have AI created content. I might love AI created content, um, but there's no way that in my belief system that it's going to replace the humans that are actually, um, you know, creating content on their own. Um, so there are a lot of, you know, uh, a lot of minefields here in terms of how this all plays out. Yeah. Um, but I think the number one thing is just really protecting people from AI being able to improperly use their their likeness in uh, creative works because, you know, they're the only ones that own that and have the ability to sign it away. Um, and that's part of what we aim to do in terms of the constitution of Filmio is protect that. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you you hit the nail on the head that the AI content, which will happen, it's going to be, you know, more of the machine uh, scripts where there's 25 writers and there's, you know, it's like it's putting out, it might compete with that type of stuff. But the the scripts and the, and the and stories with the heart and the life and the, you know, the people and the imperfections, that's that's not going to be replaced. Yeah. I mean, what's important to a robot, you know, a, a, an AI you know, uh, algorithm, you know, that, uh, wants to write something on its own, you know, it'll probably be totally different than what I care about, you know? So yeah, for sure. It'll be yeah. interesting to see this stuff come out, you know? Yeah. Cool. All right. So how can people get involved? What, uh, what can they do now? What, what should they do? What do you, what would you like them to do? <laughs> yeah, I'd say go to film.io, um, sign up for early access. You'll be let in very soon. We're actually, um, starting to let more and more people in on a rolling basis, even before, opening up completely to the public. Um, so if you're a creator and, uh, you know, you want to leverage the power of a community behind your project, mm -hmm. um, get in touch with us, go to film.io, sign up. Uh, we can help you. We can help onboard you, you know, introduce you to the concept. Um, if you're a fan that wants to be more connected to uh, your favorite creators, you want to be involved in the industry, you want to help green light films. If you want to even get involved in, designing the constitution within which I think this entire industry will, uh, will run, you know, if mm -hmm. this vision actually plays out the way we see it playing out, um, then we can use everyone's help and everyone is invited to uh, participate and, and support this. Um, join our channels. That's where you see all the different stuff happening. Our telegram channel, which you can get mm -hmm. to discord. You can get to Facebook from the film.io site. Cool. Um, and uh, yeah, get involved and, you know, let's change this industry forever. It's a worthwhile cause. And um, it's something that I know I care greatly about. 
uh, from the content consumption standpoint, uh, and also for you know helping to create a more fair environment for creators, so that mm-hmm. we can all see the content that you know they want to bring to the world and that we deserve to see. Um, everyone can play here at Filmio. Well. I've been working on a story, a bunch of short comic videos. Uh, Devin, he is a meme coin dev, and he's on a lot of adventures. So hey, maybe oh, wow. I'll be on. Maybe I'll be on there with my Devin story. Uh, and uh, that would be amazing. Let's do it. You know, <laughs> let's do it, man. In there, let's, uh, I love I it. It's, yeah, there, this is. Uh, it, it's it's really an incredible playground for you know evolving a concept like that. Um, cool. We'd love to have you, and we'd love to help support you. Awesome, man. Well, um, I appreciate it. I'll put all those links in the description of the video if you're if you're looking to be, um, you know, for a link to to learn more. So thanks for Brian for coming on the show. And uh, yeah, I'll be in contact. Coop, thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. All right, man.